you're running out of time to make the most out of this bull run. Now that's not supposed to make you panic or sound alarmist, it's just stating a reality. We're not at lows anymore. We've rallied significantly and time is ticking for this cycle. Now in today's video, I wanna break down exactly what you can do now to maximize this bull run, give you my guide as to where I think we currently are in the market and how you should play the remainder of this cycle. Because although you are technically running out of time and although you're definitely not as early as you could have been if you're just entering the market now uh, and you weren't making positions during 2023 and 2022, it's okay because I have good news as well. You still do have time to make money this cycle and not just make money, but potentially make generational wealth. Because I believe there are going to be many opportunities this year and beyond to make it in crypto, but time is running out. So in lieu of this, I want to present you a video which can help you guys navigate what is a cycle that looks, although in some ways very similar to previous cycles, I think this could be one of the biggest cycles yet, just due to the fact that we're seeing this institutional demand flow underpin demand for assets like Bitcoin and potentially Ethereum. And we're also seeing new sectors rise to prominence. We're seeing finally amazing crypto games start to come out into the market. We're seeing AI and crypto finally finding some of its initial intersections. So it's also an extremely exciting time for crypto. So before I get into my playbook for this bull market to make sure that you maximize it, I want to remind you that if you aren't subscribed, you can hit that subscribe button down below and hit that post notification bell for daily crypto alpha. On this channel, I'm going to give you altcoin guides, airdrop opportunities, trades, and a lot more to help you succeed in this market. Over the past few weeks, we've had a lot of success. We hit the ETH trade pretty nicely. I shared, you know, that I was switching out some of my Bitcoin and Solana for ETH. We hit the L2 trade really nicely. Multiple L2s that I called in my recent show are now up 40, 50, 100% in profit. So we've had a really good run. We won't always hit periods in the market like this where we're in easy mode, but I think it's very important to make hay while the sun shines in this market. And whilst the sun is shining, it's important to lock in and really maximize the opportunities in front of us. So firstly, before I get into exactly how to play this bull run, you need to understand the five phases of the market cycle. These five phases pretty much determine where we sit in the market at any given time. And depending on which phase we're currently in, and I'm gonna get into where I think we are, this will alter your approach to the market, how much you're buying, what kind of coins you're buying, when you're buying, if you are selling, taking profits, and how to actually trade that does depend on where we currently sit. So the first phase is the accumulation phase. Uh, spoiler alert, I think we're already past this phase technically. And this was the phase that we found ourselves in pretty much for the entirety of 2022 and 2023, as you can see exemplified by my total three altcoin chart here. And it's this sideways phase that marks usually uh, the best time to actually accumulate and buy cryptos during a bear market. The thing is with the accumulation phase is that although we do have historical indicators of how long these phases last, it can be very difficult to get the courage to buy during this period because there's pretty much no light at the end of the tunnel and prices can bleed and bleed and bleed and you have to be wary of catching a falling knife and you don't quite know what altcoins are going to be the prominent altcoins of the next cycle during that period. So that's why anyone that wasn't aggressively accumulating during that period, and believe me, even in the early stages of 2022, I wasn't accumulating aggressively. It wasn't really until 2023 that I really ramped up. I think that is completely fine. You, you don't want to kick yourself. Phase one is a difficult phase to nail in the market, but that is technically the first phase of a new cycle. That leads me into phase two, this is the phase that I currently believe we are in, and this is the pre-halving rally phase. Now, the pre-halving rally phase has happened in every single Bitcoin cycle to date, and it typically happens between 50 and 60 days before the halving. Currently, at the time of recording this video, we sit around two months out from the halving. The estimated date of the halving is mid-April, and history is repeating again, like it has in previous cycles, with a lot of investors now starting to buy the hype of the Bitcoin halving in an attempt to sell the news. Short-term traders and speculators, and I think this has been aided by the ETF catalyst, typically buy the hype several weeks before the halving in anticipation of making a profit from a hype-fueled rally. This is what we're seeing right now on Bitcoin, especially it's a hype-fueled rally, obviously because of the Bitcoin halving, but also because of the spot ETF. A lot of these speculators then sell the news to realize that profit because they bought in a lot lower, which contributes to a pre-halving retrace, which usually occurs a few weeks before the halving itself. And this is just based 
on previous data that we have from Bitcoin and previous historical data. And this is actually what this cycle is following as well. So we obviously you got to take past data with a grain of salt because in crypto, we only have relatively small sample sizes to work off. But so far, we have been following this trend and I anticipate that we're loosely going to follow the same structure because history doesn't always repeat, but it does rhyme. So that leads us into phase three of the market, which is the pre-halving retrace. Now, typically, this is a retrace that happens a few weeks before the halving. It can be two, three weeks before. It can also be you know eight, nine weeks before. This isn't an exact science, as I said, but typically a lot of these sell the news traders will sell pre-halving, which often results in a small retrace before the halving. This is something that in this case has not happened yet. We can see in 2020 that in the weeks pre-halving, Bitcoin dropped around 20%. And we could see in the cycle before that in 2016, Bitcoin retraced around 38% pre-halving. So these are major corrections. They aren't ridiculous retraces of 50 to 90% like you would see in a bear market, but they are definitely gifts if you look at the overall context of the market, because these present decent buying opportunities uh, to get into the market pre-halving. We know that altcoins typically don't peak until post-halving. So if history does repeat, then this would be a decent buy the dip situation to get involved in any potential pre-halving dip. Because if Bitcoin does, let's say, drop 15, 20%, this would obviously mean that many altcoins across the board do retrace 20, 30, 40%. It's not as easy as it sounds though, because during this period, it's going to question your conviction. It's going to question your patience. It's going to question whether you think that was the top and the top for the cycle is in. But time and time again, we have seen those moments where people are questioning their conviction end up being one of the better times to actually position yourself if you miss that initial accumulation phase. Now, not all of you have missed it. Uh, like you've been watching my show, of course, you probably have many great entries on all coins from 2023, but if not, there's no reason to despair because we typically do see these pullbacks, especially pre-halving. So I anticipate we are going to see it again, or at least around the time of the halving. It might not be exactly two weeks like it has been prior. It could be eight weeks. It could be six weeks. It could be the day before. But generally in that vicinity, we do see uh, decent corrections in the market. So this leads me on to phase four. By the way, at the end of the phases, I'm going to give you my exact playbook for how I'm actually playing this. In phase four, we enter the post-halving reaccumulation phase. So this is typically a period of about 100 days. You can see it in 2020, where the market is in an upwards trajectory, but re on a relative basis, it's pretty much moving sideways for half a year. We also saw this in 2016 as well. We saw the market, although it definitely was going up, it was moving sideways for around 100 days. So what we often see here is a bit of boredom starting to kick in because you've had that pre-halving rally like we're seeing right now. Then you've had that pullback. So you've shaken out some of the weak hands. Then you might have like a little bounce around the time of the halving or slightly after the halving. And then you see usually the market start to just flatline for a little bit. This is where boredom sets in. This is where a lot of people will be shaken out. But this period is actually one of the best periods for accumulation because it's your last chance to stack quality projects. And any dips during this lull that you do get on quality projects, these dips can be seen as a gift. Because what happens after, it's no secret to anybody, it's phase five, which is the parabolic uptrend of the market where you see these huge explosive gains. You can see it in 2016, 2017, obviously last Bull run, we saw this more explosively with the altcoins, as you can see here by the total three chart, which encompasses the altcoins. This is where you see your major explosive gains on alts. As I said before, I believe we are around that phase two period. And if that is the case, then there is a lot to look forward to in the market, in my opinion. The timings may be slightly different to previous cycles, but one thing I am pretty sure of is that we haven't seen the full potential of the run, in, at least in terms of the altcoins. If we actually look at the total three chart right now and compare that to the Bitcoin chart, the Bitcoin chart is almost back at its all-time highs. I mean, it's, pr it's pushing, it's pretty close. Whereas the total three chart, it isn't even at its major resistance level yet at the $640 billion zone. So it still has a way to go. The total three chart, which is the altcoin chart, to its all-time high is still 100% away. Whereas Bitcoin, to its all-time high, is only around 28% away. So in terms of a catch-up play on alt, I think the move that is yet to come, when it does come, and I do expect this to be post-halving, I think this move is going to be significant, especially in some of the top sectors uh, that I'm eyeing, that I'm gonna get into in a couple minutes here, which form the basis of my accumulation. So if we wanna contextualize that on the Wall Street cheat sheet, I know a lot of you do like to use this chart, and I like it too, because it, exemplifies in quite an easy to understand manner the 
the psychological behavior around these periods. If I had to take a stab in the dark and say where we are, I think we are definitely out of the disbelief phase now. I think that is for sure. I think a lot of people are now getting more bullish in the market. Retail isn't back yet. We can see YouTube views aren't quite back. Twitter engagement's not quite back. Uh, retail volume isn't quite back. Coinbase isn't a top 10 app on the app store. So there are many signs that tell us that retail isn't back and that obviously retail comes back in this belief, thrill and euphoria stage, which leads me to believe that we're probably in the hope section between hope and optimism so we could be anywhere in this range it's hard to pinpoint an exact period then these dips that you see here they, they are representative of these dips you get along the way um for example the pre-halving rally this could be you know an accumulation phase and then afterwards that's typically when you see a bull market kick into gear at least with the old coins which as i said based on historical data typically tends to happen post-halving even sometimes up to one year post-halving uh which could lead to you know late q4 2024 or maybe even 2025 but we do see then is of course when retail pours back in gets super optimistic and we see us hit this belief thrill and euphoria phase so the title or the thumbnail of this video is going to say that you know you're running out of time and look that's true because we are now out of this depression phase we are in my opinion now out of this disbelief phase so the time to accumulate those early positions to get those amazing risk reward entries that time is passed but we do still have a lot to look forward to, in my opinion, heading into this optimism, belief, thrill, euphoria stage, which will send the market parabolic. Um, and this isn't, look, I'm not trying to send hopium in today's video. I'm not trying to say that we're going to go on a face melting bull run right now. Like, I do think this is going to take time. There will be drawdowns along the way. It will try and shake you out. But I am trying to give you a feel for where I think we sit at the moment, because a lot of people, I'm getting a lot of messages, a lot of comments, you, people are confused. Um, is this the final run? Is there still going to be time to accumulate? Uh, what's happening? And I'm just here to compare this to previous cycles and let you know that, um, you know, I think we are still within this general structure that we have followed in previous cycles. Rect Capital posted a chart here, which tries to contextualize this in percentage terms. And in terms of timeframes, he asserts based on 2016 and 2020, that we're currently 32.6% into the Bitcoin bull market. And when the bar reaches 100%, this would be the top of the bull market. We're definitely not there yet. Rect says he says nowhere close. So in terms of timelines, that gives you an idea for where we currently sit. Now, what is the plan then? If we aren't at the all-time high yet, and we haven't quite seen the full power of this altcoin rally yet, what is the plan for actually accumulating? What is the best strategy to put yourself in a position to make money? Great question. I'll get into four steps here that I think are going to be invaluable for you in terms of building uh, really strong bull market positions. The first tip I'm going to give in terms of accumulation is to wait for extreme red days. As tempting as it can be to ape into these green pumps, as I mentioned earlier, we do see these pre-halving retracements. We do see these pullbacks, as you can see on the Bitcoin chart, let me actually show you right now. Major, major, major pullbacks in the lead up to an all-time high. We saw it in 2020 multiple times, 20% corrections. We had a rally, but we saw two big wicks that flushed people out in the early stages that were levering up too much. Then we saw another big retracement in February before that next leg up. Then we saw another big retracement before the eventual all-time high. That's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, almost six or seven opportunities through major dips to build altcoin positions. And those were the best days to build altcoin positions instead of aping in during massive pumps. So my number one tip in terms of building a portfolio here is wait for extreme red days. Do not FOMO into altcoins on green days. The second thing that you wanna do is identify strength in the market. You wanna be in the strongest coins, the strongest narratives that when the market does get that extreme buy volume, these pump the hardest. What's even worse than missing a bull run is being in a bull run but being exposed to the wrong coins. Do you know how frustrating it is? And I'm sure you've been here before to be in the market, right? You're actually in the market, but you're just in the wrong coins. You're seeing everything else pump. You're seeing AI pump. You're seeing meme coins pump. You're in projects that you fundamentally believe in, but they just aren't moving. And that's probably because you're in weak coins that haven't exhibited strength and they don't currently have the stronger narratives in the market behind them. So I think it's really important this cycle, and in a minute I'm going to get into some of my top narratives for this cycle, to be in the strong narratives. I've talked about some of these before. As I said, I'm going to get into them and give you some projects um, at the end of this video, but make sure you're in strength. One way, just based on pure TA, that you can work out whether these are strong coins 
is either on extreme green days or extreme red days. Take your pick. It's the exact same thing. Monitor which coins perform the best on both days. So if we see a massive pump, go into a website like Bounter Bubbles, look at the daily or, or the weekly time frame here, and have a look at which coins are consistently out of the top 100 and top 200, and you can even filter by narrative, performing. So look at which coins are consistently being the strong performers in the market when the market pumps. You can also do the exact same on a red day. When the market has a major dip during some of these major corrections, you can start to take a mental note and the physical notes are even better, but you can start to note which coins hold up the best. So if the entire market is down 20%, but there are a subsector of coins, DeFi coins, AI coins, whatever it might be, that just are only dropping two to 3%, that's a strong indicator that when the market does reverse, these are gonna pump the hardest because they have the relative strength. So what I actually recommend doing is using this information on Banter Bubbles. You can do the exact same on Velo. If you go into Velo and then click on the market tab, on the right, you can see a screen called price changes. You can sort by small, mid caps, large caps. Actually look on these days, which coins are performing the best on red days and on green days. Now what you can do is you can create either an Excel spreadsheet or a coin gecko, if you would prefer to use an application and start adding these coins to your watch list. Start formulating through this data, a buy list. So get all your coins together. What is the worst thing that you could do is we hit a major dip it's time to buy and you're kind of just like FOMOing into random coins. You don't even know if you want them or not. You're just like making a decision on the day. That's the wrong way to go about it. How you should go about it is make a watch list. It can be in TradingView, it can be on CoinGecko, it can be on Excel. I actually recommend Excel or Google Sheets because then you can write down your thesis and your buy plan in a spreadsheet. What I would do is I would over time add to this list. So when a major dip comes on any of these coins, you're fully prepared to take advantage of those dips because you know exactly what coins you're buying. There's nothing worse in this market than going in blind to a dip. So that is the third step that I would take um, after step two, which is identifying strength. Because once you've identified strength, then you can make a watch list and buy on extreme days. Now, if you really want to FOMO, so if, you, if there's a coin you just love and it isn't giving you a dip and you just can't physically wait for a dip. Firstly, you probably shouldn't be in crypto because this game requires a lot of patience. But if you still want to be in crypto and you still have no patience, then the best thing to do is get an initial position in. I call it the FOMO killer position. So it should kill your FOMO because now you have some exposure of 20, 30%. And this 20, 30% gives you some exposure, but it doesn't, you don't wreck yourself if, if the token ends up retracing and giving you a deeper dip. This still allows you a scope of 70 to 80% to work up to your ideal position. So let's say you want to put $10,000 in Ethereum. Ethereum is probably a bad example because most of you are probably DGENs and you want to buy you know, more higher upside coins, but it's all right. For the example, you want to buy $10,000 worth of Ethereum. Ethereum is pumping. It's not giving you a dip. Get $2,000 or $3,000 of that $10,000 in. And then when you do get those major pullbacks, then put the rest of your capital in. So even if it doesn't give you a dip, which I think most coins will end up giving you one, but let's say for some reason, Ethereum never dips. It just keeps pumping. It goes to $10,000. At least you had that 20, 30% in to give you some exposure. So you're not fully FOMOing when it starts pumping. So that's why I call it the FOMO killer. You can always get that initial position of 20, 30% if you are really FOMOing. But waiting for your major buys on extreme red days is definitely the way to go. At this stage of the bull market, you want to be buying up those dips. Dips are for buying in an uptrend and pumps are for selling in a downtrend. Pretty simple. So you know you're identifying relative strength. You know you're creating a watch list. What kind of coins and what sectors should you target for that watch list? So from my experience, what I have seen showing the most relative strength and what I have seen getting the most traction in my circles are coins from three narratives. Coins from AI, I believe is gonna be one of the most explosive sectors this cycle. I, I even believe a lot of the old coins in AI that haven't even released yet, are going to do crazy multiples. That is a sector that I think is going to rip. Gaming, I think gaming's already like leading the bull run in many ways, but I think that'll continue to perform well if we do see that altcoin blow off top for sure. Deep in as well. I think deep in longer term is actually one of the most solid and needed infrastructure bets in crypto, but because it helps power AI and gaming, I think that'll really catch a strong bid off the back of AI and gaming. And deep in can also include things like um, data storage as well. It's not just decentralized compute networks. So those are the three sectors that I'm watching. And I'm also watching meme coins because I think meme coins in a bull run also perform really well. So I'll have fun on a lot of memes. 
Just remember, in a bull run, the narratives that perform the best are narratives that retail can easily understand and get behind. This is why AI and gaming for me are such strong bets, because they're really easy to understand. AI is a narrative pretty much everyone is aware of and is really popular in the news. When retail comes back in, they're going to look for the AI coins because it's a popular news retail normie narrative. Gaming as well. It pumped hard in 2021. I expected to do the same thing in this bull run as well. You don't have to overcomplicate things. Now, me, I'm a bit more of a fundamental analyst. I do take plays across the DeFi sector. I take relative strength bets, pair trades, etc. But if I got rid of all of that fancy stuff, that's the cream on top of my portfolio, the bare bones are going to be circulating around these key narratives like AI, gaming, and deep in. So that's really important to note. And you can already start building your portfolio around that. And just remember, in crypto, you're trading attention. It's attention economy the narratives that are gaining the most attention are the narratives that will pump the most. So you really have to more so think less about price and more about, okay, where is retail mindshare going and where is retail attention going? If you can work out where that attention is being directed, that is where you're going to make the most gains. And that's why I mentioned the three sectors that I just mentioned. So you can start buying already liquid coins on major dips from these categories. I've talked about them in my portfolio video. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll leave a link in the description to a few guides that I've done across these sectors. Gaming, I did my ultimate portfolio a few days ago. Uh, I've done deep in. I'm yet to do AI. I have kind of mentioned some of them uh, in the deep in sector, but I haven't mentioned all of them. So I'll mention them. But another thing that you have to take note of is a lot of the best performers, they aren't even released yet. We're currently in what I would call the early makings of a very big IDO season. This is something I'm already starting to witness. A lot of these newer IDOs are protocols that have been building throughout the bear that are only deciding to launch now. These coins, in my opinion, will suck some liquidity out of the existing solutions. So in terms of building a super strong portfolio across gaming, AI, deep in, I believe that some of the newer launches will often be your best bets from a trading perspective. So there's really two things you got to do. One, you can invest liquid and two, you've got to save some stable coins for when these new launches launch. Obviously, you don't want to buy into a crazy overhyped valuation, but if the valuation's decent when these tokens first launch and there's an opportunity based on what you deem to be fair value versus other competitors, then these can actually be some of the strongest performers. And what actually tends to happen with these new coins, and I've seen this over the last week or so many times, is the coins will pump on day one, then they'll dump because early investors will unlock. And if there's an airdrop, a lot of airdrop recipients will just jeet their airdrop. Once that selling pressure's out, then that's when the token starts to rise. So there often is an opportunity during the first week when that initial selling pressure is hitting to actually get into these coins at good valuations before they run. We saw that on Say, we saw it on Aptos, we saw it on Celestia, we've seen it recently with a lot of the new launches. So I'm actually going to get into, in just a second, some of the new launches that I'm personally excited for. But before we get into them, um, I also want to say that, look, the type of coins that you buy from these narratives depends on your risk tolerance. The pretty basic logic you can take into the market is the lower down the risk curve you go, the lower market caps you go for, the bigger gains you're going to make. But obviously, the more risk you're also taking. So you, and this is not a question that I can answer for you, you have to ask yourself, what is your risk tolerance? Do you have little capital and you're trying to make a lot? Or do you have a lot of capital and you're just trying to 5 to 10 exit? Because that will dictate where you go. For example, I've got the AI coins in front of me. Are you going to go for these big players that maybe can give you still 10 to 20 Xs? Or are you going to go for these smaller players that can give you these 100 Xs, but your bag can also go to zero? It's the same for crypto gaming as well. There are great infrastructure plays, Immutable, Beam. These are some other coins that I talked about in my Ultimate Gaming portfolio. But then if you scroll down the list, there are a bunch of new gamers that are launching with super low market caps. These could potentially be the next top tier games but you're taking on a lot more risk. So that's also something you have to work out um, before you invest in liquid markets as well. And it's worth putting a lot of thought into this. What are your goals? Outline your goals for this cycle and then reverse engineer them. You can't possibly make investment decisions if you don't understand the risk that you're taking. Crypto is a risky game. So fully understand how much are you willing to lose? It's a risky game. It's not guaranteed. And what are your objectives for the money that you are actually investing? Now I'm going to run through some of the coins that are upcoming. So some of the future launches that I think could perform really well from these sectors. Keep in mind what I said before. Often the play isn't to buy on day one. It's to wait for the token to become reason reasonably valued versus its competitors once those initial sells are flushed out. And then you can get in. I would never recommend just buying on day one if a token is absolutely pumped in price and you're just buying other people's exit liquidity. I would never suggest doing that. 
Another thing I want to make crystal clear is that I invest in a lot of these protocols. In fact, most of these projects that I'm about to mention, I'm an early investor in. I'm an early investor because I'm bullish, but you have to understand because I'm a creator and I get access to these deals, I can buy in at a price lower than you'll be able to buy on the liquid market. That's just the reality of this market, um, just to be fully transparent. And when these projects launch, I do look to take profits. So I always want to be transparent about that with my audience. Uh, but these are the projects that I think if you can get in at a reasonable price, keep in mind that there are a lot of people looking to exit, myself included with a percentage of my position. If you can get in at a reasonable price, these can be strong performers. Let me just run through a few really, really quickly that you should probably put on your watch list. And there are always more that are cropping up. The first one's Athea. This is one of the projects I'm most bullish on in the deep in landscape because it's essentially AI and gaming because they have the compute power to facilitate AI and gaming. One with one of the biggest telcos in the world. They've got partnerships all across the board. I think you're going to be pretty blown away. I think by some of the announcements over the next few weeks, this is one that I'm quite bullish on. And there is a node sale, which actually at the time of launching this video has would have just been announced. And that node sale is essentially going to enable people to get access to the product before the token launches and earn an APR on those nodes, but also get in at the early stages of the ecosystem. So when the node sale does go live, I'm going to make a video and try and get you in as soon as it launches, because it's basically going to be a tier system. Nodes are going to start super cheap and then they're going to go up and up and up. So you really got to get in in the early stages and I'll be covering it around the time of launch, but I also recommend you put them on your radar, follow them on Twitter. By the time this video is out, their node sale details are live. I'm going to leave a link in the description to those details below. So you have them, so you're prepared because I do think it's a genuine opportunity for people that can get in early. And I mean, they've got over 30 X, the compute power of render, um, a lot of bullish catalysts. So that's what I'm bullish on because it ties into all three of these narratives that I'm bullish on. It's not often a project will cross over into all of those narratives. Another upcoming launch uh, that I'm invested in and that I think is going to perform really well is Gaiman. Gaiman is also offering decentralized compute. They're powering AI tech as well. Um, and they've also got strong ties to the gaming industry. They're a coin that's incubated by CoinMarketCap, which is owned by Binance as well. They also own their own esports arm. I think this one can perform really well and anyone that wants to get in, you do have a chance. I think there's still uh, almost two days left on the Game and Cedify registration. So if you are an S fund holder, you can access an allocation for this. It's refundable. So um, you can get your money back if, if you're not happy. And essentially, yeah, I think this one's going to perform quite well. And it does tick the three boxes that I just discussed. I'm also going to leave a link in the description below to Cedify if you want to check them out and get access to any of these upcoming IDOs. They've also got a lot more that I'm looking forward to. Bloodloop is another one that I'm super bullish on that's launching soon uh, alongside Gaiman. So those are definitely some to keep your eye on. Another upcoming one, which is just in a couple days, is Aether Games. They recently got access to the Wheel of Time series, so the IP, the exclusive IP for their card game, which is absolutely massive. It's essentially like a card game, I would say that's similar to Magic the Gathering, um, but obviously built on the blockchain, has that native NFT ownership as well. So I think there's a lot they can do with this IP. Uh, and I also think there's a lot of room for them to acquire more IP in the future as well. So Aether is also a launch that I'm excited for. I want to reiterate again that I'm an early investor in all of these projects. If you buy in is going to depend entirely on A, if you can get access to the IDO, because if you can't, then you're going to have to buy on the open market. And if you're buying on the open market, the price has to be reasonable and make sense. It can be the best project in the world. If it's at the wrong price, it won't be a good investment. So obviously there are ways to get exposure early. I mentioned the node sale on Athea. I mentioned getting into gaming through Cedify. These are ways to get in early. DOP, which, I'm sh which is another one I want to mention. This is one where they have a test net. We can get access to an airdrop. These are all ways of getting on the ground floor without buying the underlying token. If you are going to buy the underlying token on the open market, be very aware that there will be sell pressure in the early days. Creators like myself will be taking profits. So the onus is fully on you to get that entry. And of course, this is in some cases going to present major opportunities because tokens will launch undervalued. And in some cases, tokens will launch overvalued. So it really just depends on the launch. And I can't tell you right now whether it makes sense buying um, because I don't know what these projects are going to launch at. But these are projects that fundamentally I'm bullish on. DOP is a protocol that essentially enables you to encrypt your data on chain which I think is one of the basic privacy rights that is needed in crypto yet is not a standard for whatever reason. Um, so I think it's an amazing solution and a great infrastructure bet on sovereignty and ownership of your own data. So that's why I invested in DOP. 
um, but also I've been covering the airdrop in the past, so maybe you'll get your hands on if you've completed the test net, and soon they've got their main net, some free tokens. And then it's not only the upcoming launches this year, I've got my eye on. I mean, this year's cool, but I am bullish on crypto much longer term than just this year. I think there are so many long-term use cases for crypto, which we're yet to explore. So I'm actively looking at infrastructure bets, really high quality infrastructure plays long term. I think Aether is one of them, but I'm also looking at the chains. I'm looking at things like Eclipse, which utilizes the Solana virtual machine in order to power a new Ethereum L2, which could be one of, if not the fastest Ethereum L2s. This is an ecosystem that I'm super excited for, and we're in the, the super early stages. There'll be airdrop opportunities here. There'll be opportunities to get into early dApps and applications that launch on Eclipse. This is an ecosystem I'm paying attention to. Another one, and this is super long-term as well, is Monad. Monad is enabling parallelized performance, which essentially enables pipeline execution of Ethereum transactions. I think this is gonna be one of the hottest new chains in the market. Once again, probably going to be airdrop opportunities here, but also opportunities within the ecosystem as this does launch. So these newer chains, interacting with them, I think is super plus EV. And there's going to be many opportunities in these new ecosystems. So I'm also not just looking at like the shorter term, six months. I'm also looking longer term, one, two, three years in the future. What are some of the infrastructure bets that could perform really strongly? Now, just to bring it back to the Wall Street cheat sheet, I, I want to touch on taking profits as well. It's all good talking about buying and it's all, you know, great getting entries. But if you round trip it, it means nothing. So it was one thing that I'll really preach is make sure to ladder out. When we do see retail come back in, Presumably you've already got your entries there. Presumably you'll be making a lot of profits. Ladder out of positions. Don't get greedy. Siphon some of those profits off into a separate wallet. Siphon it off into stable coins, Bitcoin, ETH. But just get some money off the table. When we do start to hit this peak thrill euphoria phase, that's so, so important. And even if you miss offloading during this stage and we do start to see this correction and then this dead cap bounce, once you start seeing these indicators like Bitcoin breaking below the 200 MA, breaking key horizontal levels, that can also be an exit trigger for you to start de-risking. So you can also use technicals and you can get those technicals together. 200 MA on the higher timeframes like daily and weekly for me is a major one that I use as well as horizontal structural levels uh, on Bitcoin specifically, but also on altcoins like Ethereum being, you know, the leader generally of the altcoin market. Just make sure you have your exit triggers as well. As I said, it's all very well and good getting entries. That's the most fun part of the market, but you do also need exit triggers because at some point you're going to need to realize profits as well. So I hope this video gives you a good feel for where I think we currently sit in the market. I think you're running out of time, but I think you're still early to what is going to be the biggest part of this bull run. And I think many to tokens from here can still, you know, do massive multiples, especially in the sectors that I mentioned. Let me know in the comments below, what sectors are you most bullish on? I'm looking to do deep dives into more sectors in the future as I research them. So if there's a vertical you think maybe I'm missing or you're super bullish on, let me know. I'll do some more research into that specifically. And if there are any alts in those sectors you want me to research, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm still learning. I'm just like you. I'm still trying to learn every day. I've been, you know, learning for the past five years in crypto. I'll never stop learning. Every day I'm learning new things, becoming a better trader, researching new things. It's always important to stay ahead of the game. And I think I get some of my edge by just being on Twitter all day, on YouTube all day, like being super quick on Telegram, Discord. I'm always in the know. And, and the reason I'm able to do that is because I'm just always paying attention. So I think that's a really important lesson you can also take from my journey. Just always be paying attention. Always be willing to learn. Always be willing to change your thesis. You'll be so much better for it in the end. And of course, I'll be here every day and I'm still a bit sick at the moment. I know I say this every show, but for some reason, the sickness isn't going away. Hopefully it's soon. I'll be here most days um, to help guide you through the market, whether that be the early stage airdrop opportunities, whether that be the trading opportunities, whether that be giving you breakdowns of sectors that, that I think are worth looking into, all that stuff. That's, you know, one of my missions is, you know, not just to make it myself in this cycle, but also bring you guys along with me. I think the journey will just be so much more fulfilling if we all make it and all end up at the end of this cycle significantly better off for it together. That'll be an amazing, amazing, amazing feeling. So if you enjoyed this video, smash the subscribe button. If you're watching this and you aren't already subscribed and I will see you in the next one. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace out.